where we've hosted uh, a series called Wikidata Labs before the pandemics, then they became a remote event, and here we are again. So welcome back the community to our, I would say, natural hosting place, but uh, welcome everyone who is watching us online. It's a pleasure to also have you in our community. Today we're going to talk about structuring the Wikimedia ecosystem. And before I pass the mic to Mike, which is something that I've always wanted to say, let me just start it by uh, uh, telling you some sort of tale, a Wikidata Lab tale. Um, so this will just be a very short presentation to provide some context about what we've been doing on this process and what we are up to uh, from now on, I hope. So Wikidata Labs should be understood as a multidimensional space for community building and innovation in the academic field of digital humanities. This is not how we thought about these labs when they first emerged. We were like just trying to have fun in the Wikimedia community, but now after 39 of these events, it's time, and this is what I will present for some balance of what we've been able to accomplish. And what I'm gonna present is actually uh, the result of a paper that is, a, that is about to be published. Uh, it was approved on this Brazilian journal called In Questão, which is an information science um, peer-reviewed journal. It should appear at some point, I guess, in the coming months. And what we said on this paper is that the Wikidata Lab developed a series of laboratory practice organized as a community of practice. I, we, I think we, we better word that in Portuguese. Documenting and making them open to community participation Enabling processes and tools foundational to a digital humanities approach. What does that mean? So a Wikidata Lab, which is the space that we are now located in, is a series of meetings, events, workshops to share practices related to the use of computational thinking and laboratory practice focused on the analysis and development of the Wikidata Collaborative Database. At these events, academics, technicians, students, and open knowledge activists willing to share their projects and develop reflections on the meaning of their work for the development of computational thinking in the Wikimedia platform ecosystem. And we started the Wikidata Labs back in October 2017, so I think we have in the room uh, people that presented the first two, like Heather was first and Mike was second. <laughs> so here we are again. As the Brazilian community was working on how to best integrate Wikidata and Wikipedia in Portuguese. And labs were generously granted the Wikidata Con Outreach Award in 2019. So the RIDC Neuromat at the University of Sao Paulo is an interdisciplinary research center funded, as I said, by FAPESP. This event is also organized by the Wikimedia movement, recentering and embedding the Wikidata community in the Brazilian Wikimedia community organized by the national affiliate Wikimovimento Brazil. So many of us here are actually wearing both hats as Neuromat and as a member of the Wikimedia community. And there has been, I would say, an elective affinity between this research center, which was launched in 2013, and the Wikimedia movement. And through this affinity, many other connections were made with other institutional partners. On the paper, we have tried to do uh, a sort of demographics of the Wikidata labs as they were uh, developed, not all of them, but at least from number one to number 26. So we are like 13 uh, sessions uh, late. This is number 39 today. 
but as you know, paper, they have their own temporality, so we didn't address all of them. And something that is really interesting about the Wikidata Labs, and this is me speaking specifically about who is presenting, is it became a place where the natural hierarchy that one would expect within an academic setting is meltdown. And I think this is really interesting and it might be to some extent connected to the idea of the Wikimedia movement in which anyone can contribute. So you don't need to have academic credentials. So many of our, uh, most of our uh, sessions were actually presented and, and were the first presentation, uh, more official presentation from people who just were undergrads, uh, who, who had just graduated some of them were actually undergrads. And then of course we had people who already had uh, PhDs and masters. But I think this provides a better understanding of what, uh, what people are in the room in terms of academic credentials. Another element that is really interesting is about what are the fields that people who presented on Wikidata Labs from one to 26 came from. And we have, of course, many people coming from uh, uh, computational science and information science or communication. But we also had a broader spectrum of people presenting from different fields like education, history or art history, mathematics, sociology, astronomy. That's you, Mike. I think you've presented several times like <laughs> I don't think there is anyone else coming from astronomy <laughs> in uh, to the lab. But I think this provides also a sense of the diversity of fields and how interdisciplinarity actually plays out when you are doing innovation at some edge. So I wouldn't say a Wikidata lab is innovative necessarily in terms of research, but it's definitely innovative in terms of practices. Another element I think that was interesting is that when we started the Wikidata Labs, they were basically in Portuguese because, well, it was us and no one really uh, abroad cared about what we were doing. But at some point we switched to having English as our main language and this is why I'm today presenting in English. If you don't know, and you are watching us in Portuguese, in Brazil we speak Portuguese, but there has been a switch to have English as a major, as the main language of the Wikidata Labs. We only now rely on Portuguese when for some reason the speaker won't speak uh, English or uh, there is a specific Brazilian aspect that we want to share. And this is also to say that though we are, we are like 10 uh, people in this room, many people watch what we are doing. So this small group that emerged back in 2017 became an embryo of something that is broader and that you can see basically on the uh, statistics of who is either on site or online attending. So in blue here, you have people attending, like it's generally the same number of people between 10 and 20 people come to their to the offline sessions, the on-site sessions. But as the moment in which we are able to live stream on YouTube, then view Skyrock. And now we have even considered live streaming on Facebook and the data here only accounts. So it's not necessarily people watching live. We account for people uh, watching the 24 hours after the event because many people, of course, are unable to join because of time zones or whatever. But it says that there is some sort of expectation about what we are doing. And we don't have here, uh, for many reasons, the data coming from Wikimedia Commons, which, of course, is relevant. One aspect that uh, Commons wasn't added is that the upload to Commons is late and sometimes way later than the actual session uh, happened. So just to say that we are being watched and that's good. Uh, where can you find more information about the Wikidata Labs? So those are regular events that 
generally have the recordings of the sessions. The sessions are connected to very specific topics of interest for the Wikimedia community, but also for the uh, digital humanities uh, crowd. So there is a page uh, on Wikidata here in which you can have access to the 39 sessions, their uh, homepage, the slides, the videos, the hands-on practice, because a Wikidata lab is a double uh, activity in the morning a more theoretical, I would say, presentation. In the afternoon, we go to actually doing stuff. So Mike will provide some activities for us today. And so get along, join on site, offline. You're welcome. So another element that I would like to emphasize is a different publication coming from uh, Ferreira, Sampaio, and Tolsta. It's a um, chapter to be published in which they say the human factor must be emphasized. Every practice implies a choice and the entire set of that the RDC Neuromat made in the figure of its coordinator Antonio Galvez enable the centers to stand out in the field of scientific discussion. If uh, you're not aware, uh, Antonio Galvez who was the scientific director of Neuromat passed away a couple of months ago. And now that I'm sort of rethinking this experience that we've had, it's kind of fantastic that he gave us the opportunity to do the kind of work that we did. At some point, Neuromat not only incubated the, new, the Wikidata labs, but basically incubated the whole Wikimedia movement in Sao Paulo. And I think sometimes, I think this is really important for us to realize, provide the credit uh, to this person that allowed us to make what we are doing here happen. And this is just a very old picture. This is Antonio Galvez, as he was presenting during our very first wiki-related activity almost 10 years ago at the Neuromat First Young Research work Workshop. This is a younger version of Celio, who is also in the room. And it was basically co-organized by this Wikimedian, Antonio Galvez, in memoriam. So here we are, and now speaking about the menu for today, we are going to talk about structuring the Wikimedia ecosystem. This is, I would say, part of the fantasy, part of the mission of when people envisioned Wikidata as a solution, a structuring solution for many of the coordinating issues that the Wikimedia projects face. But I would say the experiment that we are going to speak about today is not only addressing issues for the Wikimedia community board, but more general when you face uh, dynamics of trying to create interoperability within databases or within, I would say, uh, frameworks. Before I introduce and pass the mic to Mike, let me also say some relevant information. This event has a main page. There is this shortened URL for you to see what's happening there. And the slides will be added there. Uh, the link for uh, the YouTube presentation will be added there. And we also have the list of activities for the afternoon. You can register for edit tracking. The edit tracking is um, now being run on the outreach dashboard. And of course, stay connected to the Wikidata Lab series on social media through the Wikimedia, uh, what do you call it? You, name <laughs> on social media, on YouTube and others. And of course, as I said, Wikidata Labs are live streamed. And now it's my pleasure to introduce my friend, Mike Peel. Mike Peel is very fancy. He's a postdoctoral researcher at Imperial College London, and before that, held positions in Canarias and Sao Paulo. And during this time in Brazil, Mike joined Wikimovement to Brazil, like for us, and supported the inception of the Wikidata Labs. 
As a Wikimedian, Mike has in recent years contributed a lot on integrating Wikidata and other Wikimedia projects, especially Wikimedia Commons, and he'll talk about that in a bit. He's also a Wiki Loves Monuments heavy user and a great person to chat with on any Wiki-related topics. And Mike is a trustee of the Wikimedia Foundation, yet he's not speaking today wearing that hat. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us today. Thank you, Joel. <clears throat> Thank you, Joel. Um, just a few things before I get started. One is to say I currently have a cold. It's not COVID. So apologies if I'm coughing or anything during the presentation. Another is that I'm usually in the audience taking photos. I can't do that. So I'm going to take a photo of the audience instead. So I hope that's OK. Everyone smile. Um, if you're online, um, I can't, sadly can't take a photo of you. But please do say hi in the YouTube chat. And I'm hoping someone's watching that to catch any questions that come in. Throughout all of this, if you have any questions at any point, please do yell out or stick your hand up or as you prefer. The idea is this is not just a presentation, but it's more interactive than that. There's a lot of different things I'm going to talk about, and the best time to talk about them in more detail, if you want, is during the slides. Um, so yes, I'm going to talk about structuring the Wikimedia ecosystem, which is quite a big topic. It's basically how do you link everything on, on Wikimedia projects together with everything else? It's one of the things that really drew me to uh, Wikipedia in the early days was this idea of linking between things. And um, so in Wikipedia, you can link between articles with hyperlinks. With uh, Wikidata, you can link between um, different languages, between different projects um, with interwiki links. And I think basically I spent all my time on Wiki linking things together, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to talk about a number of different parts of this. Um, so the first is just I mean, what is an interwiki link to Wikidata? Try to explain that. Uh, I'm going to assume not too much knowledge and try to start from the basics there. Um, and then I'm going to talk about how we find, um, so you create a new Wikipedia article, how do you link it to Wikidata? Um, and then how do you import basic information from that article into, into Wikidata? Another aspect I've been spending a lot of time working on is matching um, commons categories uh, with Wikidata as well. So not just Wikipedia, but also all of the different Wikimedia projects. And how that's mostly I've been focusing on that on Wikipedia, but there's the open question of how to expand that to cover other sibling projects or sister projects. I don't like the word sister projects because it's gendered, so I tend to use sibling projects now. Um, then I'm going to give a quick conclusion. And then I have a lot of work for you to do this afternoon. I have a long list of tasks, which I'll come to in the last slide. And I hope something is going to be of interest to you there. So while most people know Wikipedia, it's the first thing that comes up when you Google anything. Um, it's really well-known brand, and it has a huge amount of content, particularly on English, but also in all the different languages. And I think 250 different languages of Wikipedia. Um, but there are also siblings, there are also other projects in the Wikimedia ecosystem. The most famous being Wikidata and Commons, but also there's Wikibooks, Wikisource, Wikiversity, Wikinews, uh, Wikispecies, Incubator, MediaWiki, uh, Wikiquote, um, Wikimania, and I'm missing some, I'm sure. But there are basically a lot of different projects, all doing different things. Because knowledge exists in many different ways. It's not always something you can write down in a Wikipedia article. Commons is a really good example of that. You can't really document a photo in Wikipedia too well, but you can show it through Commons. Um, but yeah, not everything should be an encyclopedic entry. And the whole of the Wikimedia ecosystem is powered by volunteers. Um, it uses uh, Creative Commons normally licenses, free licenses to share material. So anyone can use it for any purpose and anyone could share it amongst all the different projects um, within Wikimedia. Um, it's supported by a collaborative technical infrastructure um, and the Wikimedia Foundation in the United States who run the servers and do the core activities. Uh, well, core is not quite right, but the, the global activities, I should say. Um, and then there's also a network of affiliates around the world, of course, like WMB, like Wikimedia UK, like uh, Wikimedia España, uh, which is some I've been involved in, um, but also many user groups and different communities around the world. So it's community online, community offline, all different aspects of the same thing, which is coming back to sharing free knowledge openly with everyone who wants to find it. So specifically on Wikidata, um, so Wikidata is a knowledge base. It's in its um, most core element, it's linking values. So you have a 
Um, for example, it, someone is an instance of a human. You link it that way. So it's very structured data. It's not like free text of Wikipedia. It's something that's very fast growing within Wikimedia projects. Um, so it started in 2012. It's not the latest project to start anymore because Wiki Functions came along, but it's one of the most recent ones. But even though it's only been around for 11 years, it just passed 2 billion edits. So it's a really active community. Um, and there's over 100 million data items now on Wikidata. Um, so there's a huge amount of data there structured in a machine readable way that anyone can reuse. Um, and yeah, these numbers will already be out of date because it's going up very, very quickly. This is basically what a Wikidata item looks like. So it's it has a certain structure. It has um, the most basic. You've got labels for the different topics in all different languages. You have a QID, which is a Q followed by a number, which is a unique unique ID for that topic. Um, it never changes. It should always be a, a stable um, identifier. And everything is referred to on Wikidata using those identifiers, which means Wikidata is mul in inherently multilingual. It does not assume a language in its core activities. Um, it, you can put in as many different languages as you want. I think there's about 200 different ones supported here. Each one has its own um, set. And you can put in the main label. You can put in aliases, so things it's also known as, um, and a description in the languages. Then, importantly, it has links between the different projects, which are these on the right. It can sometimes be on the right, sometimes on the bottom of the page, depends on your screen width. Uh, but these link between the different sister projects. So Wikipedia, for example. So this is Wikidata Lab, for example. There is a category on uh, Portuguese Wikipedia for Wikidata Lab. Um, there aren't many in other projects. Sure, you need to do something about that. Uh, but when you get down to uh, multilingual sites, um, so these are the ones which don't assume a language. All of these have dedicated language properties, uh, language wikis. These ones are multilingual. And here you have category Wikidata Labs on Commons, which is where you've got all the photos from all the events um, and the videos and everything else. And then you've got Wikidata as well as a list of all the events on Wikidata. And you can also link to that within the item. Then you have a series of statements about this subject. This can be as long as you want. I've seen some which have literally three megabytes of properties. It can get very, very long. But the most basic things are you've got, this is an instance of a recurring event and a workshop. And there's a link to QIDs. So if you change the language of this Portuguese, it will show you in Portuguese. Um, an instance of and subclass of tend to be the hierarchy on Wikidata. So if you want to see and for example, if you have instance of human and you want to know what a human is, you can go to that item. You can see how it's structured with an overall ontology, which is a very flexible ontology across the whole of Wikidata. Um, you then also have media. So here there's an example of a logo image and an image as well. Um, and you can also link audio, video, other things there. Um, and you can put many different items in this. So that's the basic way that, that um, a Wikidata item looks like. This may be a bit familiar to you if you're familiar with info boxes on Wikipedias where you have something very similar. You have a property which is some, it has some value against it. And we'll come back to that a bit later because it's a very close analogy. Am I talking too fast or is this okay? I just realized I am talking very fast and during the conference at Glam Wiki last weekend, people were talking very fast in Spanish. You follow, you have a book put in Espanol, but it was going way too quickly. So if I am talking too fast, please do wave at me and tell me to slow down. OK, so that's the basics of what Wikidata is. Um, I want to focus now on interwiki links between other projects. Um, so this is something that was there from the very start of Wikidata. It was one of the core concepts of Wikidata. Um, that it used to be you had all the different Wikipedias separate. They weren't linked together too well. You could put in a manual link between different language Wikipedias, so from English to Portuguese, for example, which is great, but then you also need to go and add Portuguese to English. And then if you add in Spanish, you now have English, Portuguese, Spanish all linking together, and then you've got Chinese, and you've got... It very quickly multiplies that you need N by N number of links. Um, and that's a really complex thing for humans to handle. It introduces a lot of errors. So what, you, what they did was basically bot manage it. So you had a bit of code running on the um, websites, 
would edit the article every time a language link was updated, which could be when an article was moved, it could be when a new one was created or deleted and recreated. Um, and that was generating a lot of edits, particularly if you've got a small wiki that, um, say you've got an article on Sao Paulo, it's kind of a paragraph or two in your language, but every other Wikipedia has Sao Paulo as a um, article. So every time someone updated that, moved it maybe to Sao Paulo City or something like that, it would update on the small wiki as well. And we were seeing that if you looked at the edit history of small wikis, it was basically site link after site link after site link. So it was not sustainable. So introducing Wikidata then, um, so that was basically becomes an N plus one problem. You have Wikidata, you link from Wikidata to each of the different languages. And then you can have code on the languages that queries Wikidata, gets this list back of all the um, languages and shows that. So you don't need to edit it on the Wikipedia at all anymore. Everything is managed on Wikidata. And that greatly simplified the problem. It's uh, really standardized things. There's actually, if you look particularly at small wikis, um, at the number of bytes in each Wikipedia, it drops significantly because you're removing all of these redundant language links which is great, and also the recent changes dropped dramatically because it was only then showing the human edits, not all the bot edits. So it was a dramatic change, but for the better because it highlighted the small wiki's contribution more and also reduced a lot of uh, maintenance overhead. And little things like if you link to the wrong article, then it can easily cause a lot of confusion with the bots. So it became significantly simpler and significantly more scalable, which is great. And originally, Wikipedia, it was mostly focused on Wikipedias because we had this huge database of Wikipedia links between it. So they were all bot imported into this. But then since then, it's been expanding to the other sibling contracts. So that, it simplified the problem a lot, but there are still complications here. In particular, there's a restriction that in one Wikidata item, you can only have one site link to one language project. So one link to Portuguese Wikipedia, you can't have two. Um, which if you have a item, a article and a category is a problem. Um, there's also a problem with when you're linking to commons categories, because often on commons you have a gallery um, and you also have a category for um, photos of that place or of that topic. So what happened there is we ended up having basically three items per topic in the worst case. If it's simple, if there's, a, if there's only an article, only either a gallery or a category, there's only one item because we don't need to create masses of items for this. But where there are categories, where there are lists as well, then we have up to three items which are linked together. So you have the topic item, you have a category item, and you also have a list item. And these are linked between each other using something, a property P910 called topics main category and the inverse and uh, categories main topic P301. Um, so you can go from one item to the other. And lists as well is very similar. You have list related to category and category related to list to go between them. And then the code on the Wikipedia um, projects can follow these links and get the full set of interwiki links. It's a bit complicated, particularly if you haven't seen this setup before, but it seems to work quite well in practice. There are other complications like, um, so the classic example here is Bonnie and Clyde. English Wikipedia has one item on both people, um, whereas other languages may have separate items on each person. How do you make sure you are linking to the right thing there? So it's where Wikipedia articles combine different topics together. Um, that also happens, for example, with um, organizations and buildings that you, should, you have separate categories on commons normally, um, but you may combine those into one Wikipedia article. And this has historically been very tricky. Um, there's been a solution introduced recently, which is um, before, before you could only, sorry, um, you could only link to articles. So if it was a redirect, you could not link to it. That's changed in the software recently. So now if it is a redirect, you can link to it directly. So in that case, you can link to, um, in the item for Bonnie, you can link to uh, Bonnie, which redirects to Bonnie and Clyde, and same for the other one. And you can model that to a certain extent. It is a more of a complication though, particularly when you're looking at, in, um, looking at it from different Wikipedias. 
but again it's kind of the best solution we've found so far okay so hopefully you've understood what an interwiki is how it works on wikidata i now want to talk about the maintenance problem so you've got this infrastructure you've got all these interwikis you can point towards different languages different projects you then create a new wikipedia article how do you fit that into the system so there's several different ways of doing this um ideally the article creator will link it up but then they have to know what wikidata is and as i've been explaining that that's kind of it's a bit of an esoteric topic in some cases it can be difficult to understand when you're new to wikipedia you just want your wikipedia article um if you're doing a translation between languages so from english to portuguese or spanish to portuguese or others um, using the article translation tool, then it will add this link for you, which is great. But most of the time, you have to add it manually. Um, so hopefully people do that, but historically we've seen people don't. And if you leave this to build up, you end up with thousands of thousands of unlinked Wikipedia articles, which is a problem because they are not seeing the other language Wikipedias in the, in the language links. So one thing I've added here is, um, so I operate a bot called PyBot. Um, it is a Raspberry Pi computer, um, which is continuously running, plugged into the internet. And um, so it's, it's called PyBot because of Raspberry Pi. Um, and that runs Python scripts, which are continuously running. So daily, weekly, monthly, to do different links, different projects, different activities, focused mostly on Wikidata, also on commons and others. And in this case, um, PyBot is now running a task every single day. It um, queries the database. Um, so there's a system called ToolForge, which um, has a copy of the database. You can run queries on that and pull information into uh, your script. So it runs that every day and says, where are all of these um, articles which are not linked to Wikidata yet? Um, it filters those because we only want to link to the items which are articles or categories um, on uh, in general. You don't want to link to maintenance categories to um, check user logs from whatever time or something like that. All of those are internal maintenance, don't get linked to from Wikidata. So you have to filter it out to get rid of those. Um, it then basically goes to Wikidata and says, do you have a match? Runs a search like you would if you're looking for a topic on Wikidata, you've got a search box, put in the term, off you go. And then it sees if it gets any matches. If it does, it puts those into a game, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, but if it doesn't, then it will, it's saying this is a potential item to create a new article, new, sorry, potential article to create a new item for. It then waits 14 days because it assumes that if you're not, if the article creator is not going to link it, the, or is going to link it, they'll do it in 14 days, two weeks. If they aren't, then it'll still be there after that time. It also avoids anything which has been edited in the last few days, just in case someone's come along, found it, and is going to link it. So it's it's hopeful, it's optimistic, it's assuming good faith for all the Wikipedia editors. Um, but then after that time, it basically says, okay, no one's going to link this. It doesn't have any obvious match. Let's just create a new item. And it puts that onto Wikidata. And it does this for thousands of articles every day. Um, this is currently active on a few projects. So English Wikipedia is where it started. Portuguese Wikipedia uses it. Uh, Simple Wiki, uh, German Wikipedia, mostly we're doing this manually, but it's, they're running just in the, as a backup. And I think Spanish Wikipedia, but that's about it at the moment. Um, part of the reason for that is because I've been asking each community if they're happy with it before starting to rerun. Um, and that takes time, particularly in different languages. Maybe that's something I don't need to do now, but it's something, it's the current situation. So it's running on about five different Wikipedias. Okay. So this is showing some of the statistics. This is for the Portuguese Wikipedia. So this isn't a complete log of all edits. This goes back to, this is 2016. So maybe 2015 here. Wikidata was started in 2012. There was an import process in the very early days where all the uh, links were imported. So this went very quickly down to zero to start with. But then since then, it's been building up because there was no one running um, new code to match up these items. So when this tool started up, this is um, Magnus Mann's uh, duplicity tool, which is another way you can discover um, articles which aren't li yet linked to Wikidata, and it also suggests matches. Um, 
basically you saw it was going up and up and up. You got some drops where maybe articles were deleted or someone was mass linking, but it was going up. And here it reached 15,000 articles on Portuguese Wikipedia, which is a lot. Um, then there was an editor called GZW um, who wrote a bot script to go through and just blanket create all Wikidata, new Wikidata items for all of these. Doesn't matter if it has an existing item or not. If it's not linked, it gets a new one. And there you see this behavior of it's suddenly dropping a lot. It was skipping some to start with, but over time as he was running it, I think roughly every two week, two months or something like that, whenever he remembered it, um, sorry, whenever they remembered it, I'm assuming mail, but I shouldn't. Um, it basically was running repeatedly. And you, when it was not running, you saw these quick ramp ups. So this is the rate of new articles created on Portuguese Wikipedia. So then in early 2021, um, so this was one of my pandemic projects. Um, I got I started running PyBot on this, and you can see since then it shot down to near zero, and it stayed very low. So this is because it's continuously running every single day. So these numbers never get chance to ramp up again. Apart from then, and then when something went wrong with the script, and I didn't notice it for a bit. So those are bugs, um, possibly that one as well. But that shouldn't be happening, hopefully, anymore. Or if it does. Even now, and it's is going up a bit, but it's still within the noise. But this is, I think, is showing this working quite well. That um, it's keeping the number of, it of um, articles with no Wikidata item link very low. Um, every time the bot gets um, an item deleted or nominated for deletion on Wikidata or uh, reverted, I get an email, so I can keep track of how many times it's screwing up, um, which doesn't seem to be too many. I get two or three emails per day, which, when you're dealing with these kind of numbers, is quite good. So what happens if PyBot is not running? Here is the Chinese Wikipedia. So this is again the same. It was starting over here, initial down, and then it was going up. This is when GZW was running his code. And here's where we stopped, which is one of the motivations for me starting the PyBot. He was blocked from editing and stopped running this bot. And yeah, there, this is going up to 35,000. So. <laughs> I should probably be running PyBot on this, but running things in Chinese is a bit more complicated than Latin language for me, unfortunately. So if anyone knows Chinese and wants to help with this, please do. Okay, so I said before that um, PyBot is creating new items where there's no obvious match for um, an existing item on Wikidata. What happens when there are matches? So it puts them into a game. This is a tool that Magnus Mance developed. Um, it was originally the Wikidata game with a few small number of tasks um, that you could go, anyone can go, you have to log in with your username um, and you can then use this to edit Wikipedia, sorry, Wikidata, um, and it makes edits on your behalf. He then opened this up, so he created a distributed game. So anyone can create a new game. Um, it has to have an API. You have to provide it with candidate matches and responses and actions. And that's basically it. So if you have a list of um, things you're not 100% sure with, so you can't automatically do them, do the edits, you need a human to come and check. This is a fantastic system for that because you can load it in and you can say, this is the Wikidata item. Here, this is the Wikipedia article. Do these match? If it is, yes. You click match, it does the edit, done. If you're not sure, you skip it. If it's wrong, you say no. So all of the potential matches that PyBot discovers goes into this. Um, I think there's something like um, 30 or 40,000 matches in there at the moment, uh, mostly uh, DAG wiki, um, which is uh, one of the African wikis, um, smaller numbers are from the other languages. Uh, there's been one user who's gone through this and has made something like 30,000 edits use this. It's crazy what he's done, which is fantastic, which is why this backlog is so low. Um, so I'm very thankful for them. Um, but then there's also many other editors that are looking at this and using it. And basically, when you load, uh, if you go to this thing directly, so distributors slash and then game number, it'll show this immediately. Otherwise, you go to this page, it'll give you a list of games. This is matching Wikipedia articles against Wikidata. You can choose your language. These are the supported ones. Portuguese is there, English, Espanol, Frances, others. Uh, and it'll give you these candidates for you to work through. In this case, this is an uh, item for Jose Ronaldo um, 
Medeiros. And on Portuguese Wikipedia, there's Ronaldo Medeiros. And it shows you some basic information. So it says this is a civil servant and was born in 1965. And this is a Servidor Publico e Politico Brasileiro. And he was born in 1965. So it's a match. So in this case, I did match. That's now linked. So that's, I think, quite a nice example. Uh, then I clicked onto the next one, and it was this. Um, so K9 and company. I couldn't resist putting this in the um, slides once I saw it because Doctor Who is a very famous British sci-fi thing, um, which I'm very um, keen on. But in this case, it's um, 1981 television pilot and spin-offs, Doctor Who spin-offs. So it's not clear if that's just one pilot episode or multiple. And reading this, it's Episodio Piloto. So I'm not sure if this is an exact match. I can't tell because I don't know Portuguese well enough to match it up. So here, I click skip. I'm not, I'm not confident enough to match it. So this is still in the game. If anyone does know the answer, please load the game and you can find this and match it. Okay. So, um, let me just grab a drink for a second. Everything making sense? Okay, sorry. Um, so another aspect of this is, so you've got a new article on a, a new topic, it's not on Wikidata data yet. Pybot comes along and says, this is no match, we'll create a new item, creates a new blank item. That's not too useful because it's just literally the article title and the site link. Um, so it's not discoverable on Wikidata. There's no extra information there that, will, that you find it. Someone else has to come along and add that. Or Pybot has to look through and see if there are um, obvious things it can pull out from the article and load them into Wikidata which is very tricky, um, particularly because often it's um, just free text in the article. Um, so you need to be able to parse it somehow. Um, you need to extract the right facts. You need to match them up with Wikidata items. Because remember, these are QIDs. So if you just have the name of a child, for example, then you can't just search for that on Wikidata and get the result. You have to find the right QID. So it becomes very complicated. Um, there are some simple things you can do and it does try to do them. So the simplest thing is look at the page title. There's certain standards on Wikipedia that if you're writing an article about a list, you'll start it with list of, or list edgy in Portuguese. So it can look in the page title and say, OK, let's take the page title, the first bit of it, uh, so the first 10 characters in this case, lowercase it so we're not max, uh, ma mismatching capital letters and things. And does that exist? OK, yes, it does. So then it creates a new item, so a new claim. This is P31, which is instance of. And it says this is Q13406463, which is a nice short um, way of referring to list, uh, Wikimedia list items. Uh, well, it is if you're a computer, not so much if you're a human. And then it just adds the claim. So this is an extract from the live code that's running. It's a very simple setup, and it's just doing a basic check. You can do this also for, does it have film in the title in brackets? That normally indicates there's a movie or TV series or things like that. So that gets a few of the basic things. I think list item and uh, disambiguation are the most relevant there. This, I'm hoping people can help me expand because uh, I mean, this is just a list of if statements. So we can easily add more. So that's one of the tasks we'll come back to later on. The other thing it does is it looks at biographies. So there was a, um, another user that wrote a bot specifically aimed at creating new items for biographies created on English Wikipedia. So he wrote quite a nice script that went through each new biography that was created. Oh, well, they first looked through all the items and said, is this a biography? Which is some key information like, does it, is it, does it have a birth date, a death date? Um, does it have info box person? Basic things like that, that indicate this is a biography. It then extracts some information from that. So, for example, you typically get at the bottom of categories, category 1984 births or something like that, or 
twenty twelve deaths something. Um, so you can extract that information and know that's reliable. So you can use that in Wikidata and you can add those directly. Um, it also includes occupation, which is a bit more difficult. So in this case, it goes through the categories at the bottom. And if it's, say, um, woman astronomer, then the Wikidata item will have properties which say this category can bet contains women and um, astronomers. And you can get that information. You can put that into Wikidata. Um, then it also includes gender information, or it does its best to. So it looks both at the categories and says, is this, um, does it say woman in it? Does it, say, or in the introduction section, is it she or him? It's being said a lot. And it tries to guess based on that, which I think works reasonably well um, for most cases, 99%. It fails in, well, there's one particular example of male coaches of women's football teams. It thinks they're all female. So people have to modify, manually modify that. Another case is non-binary, transgender, and the like, LGBT. It can't easily cope with that. So that is it's something that was raised at a recent meeting, um, which was, seemed like a good point, but I have no idea how to tackle that. Um, because as I said, 99% of the time it's working well, but these edge cases, people have to manually find them and fix them. And it could be misgendering people in that. So that's an issue which I have to come back to, but at the moment it is still running. Since, so I said this was created by another user, um, they then retired from editing and um, running the bot, so it stopped running. So then I managed to get running again on PyBot, and I've been tweaking it as well. So it now covers Portuguese, Spanish, French, simple, um, and it could ex expand to others, but it need, I need help, basically, because it's very language specific so in if you're looking at gender in english you're looking for she he and that changes for different languages and you need to know what it changes to and i don't speak many languages i barely speak portuguese and spanish i'm afraid um, so i need people who are experienced with those languages to say these are the pointers to look for this is how you say this is a article about female this is how you say it's um nascimento something like that, the birth date. Um, and it also varies between different projects. So some might not have birth and death date categories. And they might encode that in other ways, or they might put an exclamation mark at the beginning of the category name, things like that. So once you understand that, you can encode it into the bot, and it can start running. And it will create new items. It will match up. I didn't say this. Also looks on Wikidata to see if there's already an item um, with that person's name. And if it has the same birth date or death date, then it links them. Um, so it's also trying to minimize the number of duplicates, but then it also is creating new items continuously as well. So again, this is something I'm hoping you can help with this afternoon. Okay. So I'm about 11 o'clock, so I've still got plenty of time, I think. Good. Okay, so that's some of the basics of what PyBot can get from the page title from the um, article itself um, on its first pass. There are then other scripts it runs. Um, so on English Wikipedia, for example, there are short descriptions. They were originally using Wikidata, um, just pulling the descriptions onto Wikipedia, but there wasn't visibility amongst the Wikipedia, English Wikipedia community for that. So they objected to this, and they've got a new system now, which is short descriptions on each English Wikipedia item which is a bit duplication because you still got the Wikidata descriptions, which you also need. So you have two descriptions, one on English, one on Wikidata. So what PyBot does is it tries to minimize discrepancies here that if someone creates a new or adds a short description on English Wikipedia, it will copy it and put it into Wikidata. There's a slightly tricky thing there that the English Wikipedia is Creative Commons attribution share alike licensed and Wikidata is Creative Commons zero. So it's public domain, essentially. Anyone can reuse it without attribution. The loophole here, which PyBot exploits, is that these short descriptions are short, so they are not copyrightable. So it can be copied over into the Wikidata item without needing attribution. That works quite well. Um, and the original reason that English Wikipedia was complaining about descriptions from Wikidata was because of vandalism. The people were vandalized on Wikidata because it wasn't being seen elsewhere at the time. 
that vandalism would stay for a long time and they would get complaints about it. So they didn't like that. Now, um, because PyBot copies from English Wikipedia to Wikidata, every time it copies over a vandalism edit and someone reverts on Wikidata, I get an email. So that's useful. <laughs> and that does happen roughly once a day. Um, so it's not massive amounts of vandalism, but it's still coming through, still getting onto Wikidata, unfortunately. Um, and I also notice people sometimes just change it on Wikidata, don't change it on English Wikipedia, so I have to do that. Um, other times it might be changed just on English Wikipedia, not Wikidata. There's a whole category of um, short descriptions that don't match Wikidata descriptions. If anyone wants to spend a few decades going through that, there's a huge database of that. Um, I haven't figured out how to tackle that with the bot yet. If you've got any ideas, I'm very open to them. Um, another thing you can get, because it's very structured, is coordinates. So if something is a place or a monument or something like that, it will have a coordinate in the Wikipedia article or the Commons category. And it can, PyBot can copy those onto Wikidata, um, which means they then show up in things like WikiShootMe with um, maps based on Wikidata showing where coordinates are and basically makes it more discoverable. You can also look for, on Wikidata, you can look for nearby items to that, top, to that item based on the coordinates. So that's, it's quite a nice way of discovering new items. So where possible, PyBot copies them in from English Wikipedia from Commons. Again, it's facts, it's not copyrightable, it's fine. Um, it also copies the birth and death dates um, because these aren't necessarily added when the article is created, but someone can come along later and add them, particularly if someone's died and the Wikipedia article has been updated. And there were tracking categories for this. So. Um, I think there's something like um, uh, articles which have not been updated, or oh, articles with a death date are not on Wikidata or something like that. So it's a specific Wikidata related tracking category that PyBot goes through and it imports those onto Wikipedia, onto Wikidata. Normally great. The downside is recently there was a anonymous vandal on um, Simple Wiki that was creating very short new articles about footballers and saying they've died today which was not the case. But these were all being copied into Wikidata by the bot. People were reverting it there. I was getting emails um, and people were getting frustrated because they couldn't see where it was coming from, even though the edit summary says where it does. So that's another issue that you get vandalism coming in from Wikipedia articles can be bot imported into Wikidata and needs to be created. The good thing about this is um, because Wikidata is so structured, um, creating backlogs, creating lists, querying things, look for discrepancies, is so much easier on Wikidata than it is on Wikipedia. So as part of this work as well, I found cases where a um, Wikipedia articles had the wrong co um, coordinates on it for 10 years. That does happen. Um, and other things like it's in the wrong category or there's, there's general messes in Wikipedia that because you got the data from Wikidata reveals them. I need to find out more. So these are the things that PyBot currently runs. Um, it could do more. Um, at the bottom of each article nowadays, there's authority control, which is mostly from English Wikipedia. There are some cases where it's, sorry, mostly from Wikidata now. Um, there's some cases where it's not, so that could be pulled in. Um, a particular example there maybe is Wikilove's monuments, that a lot of um, projects that started up with Wikilove's monuments 10 years ago have their own template um, on Commons with an ID for that monument. Not necessarily on Commons yet. Sorry, not on Wikidata yet. So that may be something to expand. Um, I mentioned before about info boxes. There's a whole load of structured data in info boxes that could be in principle be imported over, but those are structured in free text, so it's very difficult to do that. Um, I've done a lot of manual kind of integrating Wikipedia articles and Wikidata with info boxes, uh, particularly with Infobox Telescope on English Wikipedia. And it is quite fiddly to get things working right on Wikidata that show up correctly on Wikipedia. It's possible, but it takes a bit of time. Um, in principle, that could be done with a bot. Maybe it needs machine learning, maybe it needs artificial generative intelligence, something which I don't know so much. Um, so that may be something else in the future. And also, I mean, this, this is a huge problem. So there's, I'm sure you have many other ideas related to this that you can, we can talk about later. Okay, so mostly so far I've talked about Wikipedia's and Wikidata. There is also Commons, Wikimedia Commons, Media Repository, um, and historically, interwiki links were not used for Commons. There were a few, but there were few and far between. Most of the case, it was linking with templates, 
So a Commons category is a template. Um, and those can be very ad hoc. They can point to random different items. Um, and this is, again, one of the cases where I was finding um, articles on English Wikipedia linking to the wrong Commons category for the last decade. So Wikidata has changed dramatically because now you can have the interwiki links, the multilingual sites link to Commons categories, to galleries. Um, and over the last five years, basically been doing a huge effort to increase these. So there are about seven or eight million Commons categories um, and about five million of those um, plus galleries plus other pages are now linked to from Wikidata. And this is mostly driven by the Wikidata info box. I'll come to on the next slide. There was, because this wasn't originally possible when Wikidata was started, and there was a property P373 Commons category set up. There's also, I forget the number, but Commons Gallery exists. This, for me, is not very useful because it's, originally it was just a temporary measure, and now site links exist, I should have replaced it. Did not happen. Um, the reasons are it can be it can have multiple values. So if you don't have an exact match on Commons for your Wikipedia article, you can put multiple ones in, and you can do that with multiple templates on the article or multiple P three seven three values. People do that. People link to very general articles like Caterpillar Human or something like that. So you get some very bad values in there. You can also link to the same category for multiple items. So if you remember before saying that in some cases you get combined uh, Wikipedia articles. Um, you can also get combined comments categories that you need to link to for multiple items. So it's appealing for those reasons. The downside is it's very one directional. So an interwiki link, you're on the comments page, you see the links to Wikidata. Um, and if you're on Wikidata, you can see the links to comments. It's bi directional, you can see both ways. P373 is one directional. You can see it when you're on Wikidata, and you can get to comments from there. But you can't get back. You can't get from the comments category back to Wikidata. And that has a lot of implications. You can't automatically do that at all. Whereas a site link, you can. So really we focus on the site link. Um, there's been various deletion debates about this, um, which has not been resolved yet. Um, so maybe this is something we could talk about later. It's for some of these reasons. Uh, another one is it's very easy to query this. So if you want to use a Wikidata list using Listeria, you can easily get P373 and link to it. You can also get the um, into wiki links, the commons category link, do require some more lines, some more code, which complicates things. So it's an open problem. The downside is with all of these um, into wiki links existing and P373 values, there's 5 million of them as well, there's discrepancies. What do you do with them? Someone puts in vandalism or moves the category. There's some things that bots can do, can uh, if it finds a link to a redirected category, it can update that. If it finds a link to a non-existent category, it can remove it, but it's limited in what it can do. So this causes a huge duplication, huge maintenance backlog. So why I'm particularly interested in having links to commons uh, from Wikidata is because commons is a multilingual project, but it's often very English. So the category titles are all in English or Portuguese or whichever, whichever country it depends on sometimes it varies, which is not very friendly for people that don't speak that language. So particularly when I was living here, I was finding a lot of information about monuments around Sao Paulo um, because I like taking photographs of monuments, uploading to commons, but I was really struggling to find any information about them because it was all entered in Portuguese. And I didn't speak Portuguese, so I still don't too much, but particularly back then, I did not understand Portuguese. So the idea was, why don't we have a small box on commons categories that is multilingual, so you can choose any different language you want, because Wikidata is inherently multilingual, and shows some basic information about that topic. So it shows the um, category name in your language. It shows, um, it's an instance of Research Institute, or so on, in your language. It might have a map so you can see where it is located. So this is newer maps, we are there. Um, it'll have some pictures. So because Commons is so orientated on media, it's a natural place to look and see, does Wikidata have a picture of this? If it's in the info box, you know it's yes. If it's not in the info box, add one. It takes the maintenance burden to the, the people where people are working on it. Um, it's very simple to put into the categories. This is bot deployed. 
now running in about 4.7 million categories. Um, I think it's technically the biggest info box deployment ever, even outside of Wikimedia, so that's fun. Um, and it's very simple, you need to have recycling, so you need to link between Wikidata and the um, category. Once you've done that, you just add Wikidata info box in brackets, done. Everything else is completely automatic. All this information is drawn from Wikidata. You can't manually define it because that will cause problems with the languages because you define it in one language, not the others. It gets into a mess very quickly. So very simple rule, no local values, everything on Wikidata and everything will be multilingual. Um, this also shows information which can be used across all the different Wikipedias because in an ideal case, you want to know Neuromat Inception 2013. That is a fact, hopefully correct, um, hopefully with a reference on Wikidata. And you want to just use that wherever you're saying Neuromat was created in 2013. You don't want to have to vary that. You don't want to have to go through all different Wikipedias and verify it. So if you have this information being shown on commons, if you have info boxes on different language Wikipedias also using Wikidata, you end up with that common data point, one place, it's definitely right there. If it's not, you get the, the eyes, people reading it and saying, that's not right, and going and making the changes, and it's updated everywhere. You also get things like the image, if you find one on commons, and you update it, you see it in the info box here. It will also update it all the different language Wikipedia articles in their info box. So it becomes a very powerful way of distributing uh, information. Also makes it very attractive for vandalism, which is a risk, but uh, that's something we need to work on in general within Wikimedia, within Wikidata. Um, another thing you can do, which is not shown here, is authority control. Uh, so here it's linking to the Wikidata QID. Normally that will also be a list of different authority controls in, uh, say, Papas database or things like that, places you can find more information about that topic. Uh, not in Neuromat items, so please, if you're a particular, but also anyone else, please add some, and then they'll show up here as well. This info box is not static. It's evolved a lot since the original concept in 2018, um, and it's being driven by community input. So we have a, a template talk, Wikidata info box is very active. If you have any problems with how this is displaying, you can comment there, and we look into it. Um, if you have any suggestions for new properties to add to this, it's also very welcome. And we do continuous development. Um, I, that's deployed them every month or two um, just to avoid overwhelming the servers because this is heavily used. Um, but other than that, it's very open to input. Um, so the example I showed there is in English, um, just to show it's working across all different languages. So this one is in English, South Pole Telescope. As an astronomer, I can't really show telescopes. Um, this is the giant Ukrainian radio telescope, which is all showing in Ukrainian. Um, this is uh, so if you don't know Lydia Fincher, she's one of the main Wikidata people based in Germany. Um, so this is showing her um, information in German. Groundbird is the project I was working on in Tenerife, in the Canary Islands, and that's a Japanese-led telescope. Um, so this is showing all the information in Japanese, which works uh, mostly. There's issues maybe with kanas and things, but um, some things don't get translated. So if it can't translate something, it does fall back to English or to the fallback languages within Wikidata. Um, it also works for other things like this is an extension, also has a commerce category. And then you might see this around. This is the basic thing where there's no Wikidata item is site linked. So there's no information to display from Wikidata. So if you see this, it's asking you to search for, in this case, it's Ukrainian Wikidata University, it was not linked at the time. So you can click on that link and search for it. And if you find it, you can add the link, refresh this page, and you'll see the info box. You can also create a new Wikidata item. And there's also a useful link for uploading media, which is always there. So if you want to upload media specifically to that category, you can click on that, get to the upload wizard, and put the media directly into that category. So um, there's also a bunch of other things that the info box does, like um, for people, it will categorize them based on their birth date automatically, and put them into gender categories, put them into, uh, if they've won a prize, um, and the prize has a commerce category, it'll put them in that category as well and things. So it's a nice way of using Wikidata information to um, cascade information across commons. And also all these links go to uh, the commons categories for those items. If you want to find out about Wikimedia Deutschland, for example, you just click on that link and you get there. That actually is a significant change because often uh, if you just got to a commons category page, it just had media about that content, that, item, that topic, that would be it. You wouldn't be able to go anywhere else from it. 
having the info box displays that context, displays links to related media, so it makes it easier for Commerce to navigate to find related um, items as well. Okay, so I said there's five million of these uh, links now exist. That was a huge job, and that's not something you can easily do manually. So there was a lot of bot um, works here. So in particular, um, if someone adds commerce category to a Wikipedia article, then the bot will find that and will add the link. Um, it got a lot from P373, which was the main system back in the day. Um, it copied over half a million, I think, from that. Um, and it still does copy over. So if you do want to still use P373, you can put the value in. It'll, bot will copy it over to the site link. There's then been a lot of people batch adding links. So particular Wikileaks monuments, here would be Edo, I guess, that um, you have a whole load of categories about monuments. You want to link those to Wikidata so they're discoverable. And um, so you bulk add these commons category links as you're creating new items or editing existing items. Um, PyBot also bulk creates some. So there's a particular example of ships, which on commons are categorized by International Maritime Organization number, IMO number, um, which is a unique identifier for that ship. It doesn't change when the um, ship name changes, but it has subcategories with ship names. So the bot goes through and um, tries to find existing items for these ships using the IMO number and links it if it exists, create new ones if it doesn't. And it also creates items for the ship names um, because they are linked to in a particular way, they're subcategories, they also have info boxes. Um, a lot of people also manually add um, the links when they're creating new categories. Um, so a lot comes in through that as well. Uh, I think actually there's been an uptick in the number of commons categories that exist since Wikidata Infobox has come along because of Infobox. Um, there's also another game. So I have a bot script that goes through and looks for matches between Wikipedia articles and commons categories based on the titles, the names. Um, so if it finds a match, then it puts them into a database and you can use a game to look at that. That um, it's actually added less than I thought. I was looking a few days ago. It's added about 46,000 um, of these. It's also ruled out a lot of others that are potential matches. Um, but there are still about 60,000 potential matches in there. Um, and I could easily add more into this. It's just a case of running the script because there are so many categories not linked to yet. And this is what it looks like. So it's basically the same as before. It's a different game number. This is commons category matches. Uh, here, you, you don't have the language options or anything. It just returns search results. So this is Galleria. This is an English one, I think. It's a golf tournament. Um, it has a particular challenge. And then this, it seems to be a shopping mall. So that's probably unrelated, so that would be a no. But it comes up with a whole load of these you can work through and add the links. And if you click match, then it will automatically save a match and the info box will come along in the next day or so. If you go no, it'll get rid of it and won't consider that match at all. So as I said, there's about seven or eight million comments categories, about five million of them are linked. So there's still two or three more million to do. One possibility is we could bulk create new items for all these, because if you look through comments, there are a lot of places where it's um, like monuments, they're not linked to on Wikidata yet, or buildings or streets or everything like that, which are all notable and should have Wikidata items. There's the risk there that you might create duplicates if the item already exists. So that's why we've got the Wikidata game um, to try to minimize that. Um, one thing I did do at one point was I started bulk creating items for humans that have a commons category because you can get a lot of information out. You can get the birthday, uh, sorry, birth year, death year, uh, occupation, things, the same as you can on these on Wikipedias. That actually led to PyBot being blocked because it seems there's a lot of notability issues with categories for people on commons that um, sock puppets and vandals and people have created commons categories um, along with Wikipedia articles. Uploaders and media, they're put into a Wikipedia article. Wikipedia article's not notable, they get deleted. No one actually goes through to commons and says, well, we don't need these pictures either or this category. So there's a huge backlog of things that need clearing out of commons. So that needs to be sorted out before a bot could tends to be rerunning on this. So all it does at the moment in biographies is try to find matches, put them into the game. There are also a lot of category combines categories. So streets in Sao Paulo, monuments in Sao Paulo kind of thing, um, that are combination. They're not representing a unique object. 
And if you describe them, you'd normally do this category combines uh, street and Sao Paulo. Um, and Wikidata doesn't really want those bulk adding, even though it'd only be a few million out of 100 million, it's not a big deal, but they don't want it. So that's a blocker as well, because he needs to somehow filter out those category combines from the others. So that's kind of an open question. How do we do that bulk creation? There's also, so there's a long debate back in the early days of Commons, back in 2005 or so, even. Do you have a gallery, which is like an Wikipedia article, that's showing the best images of a particular type? Or do you have a category that contains subcategories and all the media related to that? It's kind of gone back and forth, particularly in the early days. I think it's very much decided now on the uh, category side. But there are a lot of galleries that have still. Some are very good. If you look at them, they create, they are actively curated, and they have very useful pointers to where the best images for that topic, um, which otherwise will be buried in subcategories. Others, though, were created in 2005, were, had their interwiki links removed when Wikidata came along, because it was like a dozen, and they haven't been added to since. So I found one toilet paper recently, which has five images. And there's a whole lot more images on commons of toilet paper, of course, because that's something commons that editors are interested in, particularly which way around it is and things like that. But that's another topic. Um, so I basically redirected that gallery to the commons category because I don't think it's useful to be pointing people to this page with five images of toilet paper on it when there's all of these, <laughs> these categories. So there's lots of examples like that. How do we do that? Do we delete them? Do we redirect them? That's an open question. Um, there's also now there's structured data on commons. So like Wikidata has structured data about uh, Wikipedia articles and things, um, commons has structured data about each file. So you can store information in that about uh, who took the photo, what it depicts, when it was taken, everything like that. Um, and in principle, you could use that to create categories or tags and find things on commons with that, particularly when you get, um, if you start looking at querying um, this information for commons, which is possible now. Will that replace categories in the long term? There's no question. Maybe we don't need categories anymore. Maybe all this work is still going to be useful because we find all the links. We can use those to populate structured data on commons. But maybe in the end, we just get rid of categories. That's probably a uh, real figure we'd have in the next decade, kind of question. Um, and yeah, there's some things like there's a whole load of P373 mismatches if anyone wants to go through all of those. Um, and also if the, on Wikipedia's categories, uh, Wikipedia articles, there's a lot of miss uh, links to comments categories on those, which also need to be resolved, which is more difficult because they are all in the articles. So there's a whole load of backlog that it still needs to go, to go through there. Um, PyBot mostly just skips over these because it can't add them for whatever. It kind of, they duplicate other links or don't look right for other reasons, but they do need to be sorted out in the long term. Five minutes. Oh, okay. I've been talking a lot longer than I thought then. Uh, so I have to speed up. Um, there's also information on commons. So this is a category for ships, and you've got the info box, you've got all of this information. You've also got all this manual information. It all needs to be copied over into Wikidata, deleted. I don't know how to do that with a bot, because it's free text. So that's something to look at. Then the other big area is other sibling projects. So I've talked about Wikipedia, Wikidata, commons, Wikisource, Wikiquote, also should be linked in consistently across all of them. How do we get to there? So one of the things I'm looking at at the moment is the English wiki quote. So in this case, it has a lot of English late article titles uh, for um, quotes from different people, from different films, things like that. So it can be linked to quite easily. Um, I can do, I can find matches. I've got that code working okay. I can create new items at some point, but there's a question of what to do with the potential matches. The obvious thing is put that into the Wikidata game which works well for Wikipedia articles, for commons, it has special bits of code in that. But it seems there's a bug for um, sibling projects. So if you say it, here is a English wiki quote um, into wiki prefix, it'll just, it can't cope with it. it, it doesn't work. Maybe I'm not giving it the right implementation, I have to do a different incantation or something, but at the moment that's where this is stuck. Hopefully that will get unstuck at some point because English wiki quote people really want this tool to be on there working soon. Um, wiki source is also more complicated. So typically um, you have items on Wikidata for a book, but then you also have items for each edition of a book. So if there's a first edition, second edition published in different years, there might be different versions. 
and Wikisource uses those different versions for its links. In that case, how do you go from the Wikipedia article about the book overall to the Wikisource items that are specific editions? That's not obvious at the moment. There's probably a way of doing it using a template, but it's more complicated. And there's also issues like some um, language sources are more integrated than others. So some of the Indian ones in particular are quite well integrated. English wiki source isn't at all. I don't know about Portuguese wiki source. And there's things like wiki species, which is a whole taxonomy tree, a whole dedicated wiki um, for taxonomy. But that's all done in Wikidata now. Do we still need that? The problem is it's not a one-to-one -one match because there are at least five different taxon trees in the Wikimedia projects. It's um, academic debate going on. How do you link between all these taxons? What's the hierarchy? That becomes very complicated very quickly, and you've got people from different communities that have set up their own system. So, Commons and Wikidata are sort of aligned now because of the info box. Wikispecies uses something different. It's not compatible. How do we deal with that? English Wikipedia uses something different. Portuguese Wikipedia uses something different. I could give a whole other talk on that, but I don't have time. Okay. So, recent conclusions. That's a lot of information. I hope it's all made sense. I think the main points I want to make here are that Wikipedia's, so looking across the whole of Wikimedia ecosystem, all the different projects that exist. Wikipedia's are mostly linked, um, at least in some languages, maybe not in all. We saw the example of Chinese Wikipedia. Um, but handling new articles is tricky. Um, so maybe I can, that bot code can be expanded to cover more languages. Uh, maybe it can also be expanded to add more information about new items when they're created. Commons is about halfway there, I guess, maybe a bit more than that now. There's still a lot to do there. P373 is a tricky issue. Category combines categories is still a tricky issue. How do we get all the way so that when you create a new Commons uh, category, PyBot does the same as English Wikipedia and creates a new Wikidata item for it or something like that. And then the other sibling projects need a lot of work. So that's an open question. I'm hoping you can, we can talk about this this afternoon and you can come up with some ideas. I should also mention um, switching hats, so putting foundation board hat on. Um, we've currently got a project within the Board of Trustees, um, which is a siblings project task force. So historically, all the si sibling projects have kind of, there was a batch of them created in the very early days. Then there was a stop. And then Wikidata was created because Denny really pushed for it. Uh, and then Wikifunctions was created because Denny really pushed for it. Um, and that's not really a sustainable process unless you can get Denny on board with pushing for a new project. So how do you create new Wiki, Wikimedia projects covering any different topic you can think of? If you look on Meta, there's a huge list of these. And people are continuously putting new ideas in. Some bad, some good. How do we deal with those? Part of that is also the projects we have, some work fantastically, some have died. We just haven't admitted it yet. Um, some can work in one language, but not in other languages. There's no curation process that exists for these. How do we close down projects which are no longer active or relevant? How do we merge projects? Um, so wiki species into uh, Wikidata, for example. Or split. Or another one is uh, Wikisource. Do we need individual language uh, Wikisources, or can we have a multilingual one that combines all of them? particularly for books which cover multiple languages in the same volume. There's also splitting. So Wikidata has a lot of journal articles, Wikisite. That could be its own project. Wikijournals also exists and could be another project. So we're trying to define, we're not doing that as a board of trustees. We, we can't do that. We don't have capacity. We're trying to define how to get a committee, a team of people working on this. Um, so be, please do have a look. There's on Meta, the Sibling Projects Task Force. We've got some volunteer advisory members. We're trying to come up with an initial concept that hopefully sometime next year we'll be opening up to more wider conversations. And then last slide is afternoon tasks. So I've shared basically a lot of what I've been doing over the last five years with you. I've hopefully shown a lot of open threads. And um, because I'm now on the board and things like that, I don't have much time to work on this. So I'm hoping others can help and take over some of these tasks or expand on them. So I've got a list of different things here for you to look at. Um, one thing is just play the Wikidata games. There are thousands and thousands of potential matches in there. Um, it's a great thing to do on your phone if you're on the bus, going to Sao Paulo or something like that. You can just um, play the game and add useful information to, to Wikidata. If you can identify some patterns in new articles that PyBot could use, 
perhaps particularly in Portuguese Wikipedia, but also in other languages. That'd be really useful. Uh, you saw the code for doing that in the in Pybot, so we can easily add more places in. If you just describe them, you don't even have to write the code yourself. Just come up with the, the patterns. Um, other ways of getting information from Wikipedia to import would be very useful to get any ideas. Additional languages we can support, um, with the caveat that it needs that local that language knowledge to be able to add um, that to the code. Um, there must be new games opportunities here. Uh, different approaches would be taken for these problems. Have a think about them. Uh, if you're a coder, you can write some code. All of Pybot's code is open source. It's all on here, on GitHub. Um, if you want to make any changes to it, you're very welcome to do so. You can put in a pull request, and I can merge that into the live code. If you want to do something different, you can always just copy that code, use it as examples. Um, there was a previous Wikidata lab I gave, which was talking about how to write PyWikiBot code. If you want to go and um, listen to that, I'll hopefully teach you a lot. Um, so yeah, have a look at the code. We can also just have a look through commons categories, look through monuments in Sao Paulo or something like that, see which ones don't have commons info boxes, and create new Wikidata items for them. And finally, Joe asked me to put in links. So reminder that the event main page is this. Sometimes the dollar gets lifted on the, off the end. If so, if you get a 404, make sure to add the dollar sign. And also, if you're editing this afternoon, please do make sure to register for event, epic tracking. I think that is everything. So I'll hand back to Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone. So uh, now we have time for uh, questions. So I'm tracking. And if they are uh, interested in asking a question, they just put them on the YouTube uh, channels or the Facebook streaming. I don't know how it's called, but uh, I think we can also have people here in the room asking questions. You need to talk on the mic so people that are watching online can also listen to what you're saying. Questions? Oh, no question. <laughs> I knew it. Hello, Mike. Thank you for your presentation. I uh, was wondering how can we discuss and test and improve the code of uh, PyBot? So, uh, for example, I see that you put the GitHub link uh, there, but how do we test it um, on Wiki or on a test Wiki? and things uh, so we can improve and test this code on Portuguese Wikipedia, on uh, Wikimedia Commons and other projects? That is a very good question and highlights the flaw in my coding approach that I tend to write code which is running live and I tend not to write code which is easily testable. So, um, and the basic thing is if you look through the code, there's a lot of hidden input statements which stop the code at various places and you can configure it to look at specific articles and things like that. Um, but you need to have the, you basically want the link to the Wikipedia articles and the Wikidata resource uh, using information from there, but not saving information. So often I just go through the code and I comment out all the um, places that save it. Um, if anyone wants to write some better code, which actually does unit tests and things like that, that'd be really, really useful. Um, but the basic thing is, I think, if you find an example of an article where the pattern you're thinking about is present, then we can extract that part of a code from um, the main code, try to run it, see whether it works, and then merge it back into the main code and deploy it onto the live version. Um, and then hope it doesn't go wrong. But um, yeah, testing needs to be better in this process, to be honest. Does this mean everything made sense or everything was a blur? <laughs> I have quite I could I could start asking questions, but I want to be democratic this time. <laughs> so monopolization. Read my question. So uh, Wikidata Infobox on Wikimedia Commons, does it use uh, Wikidata IB module? And how could we reproduce the, the concept of Wikidata Infobox on, for example, in, in the Portuguese Wikipedia, where we just put Wikidata Infobox or you know, 
Infocasha Wikidata there, and we have a universal Wiki, uh, Wikidata generated info box there. So I can you repeat the first bit of that? I didn't quite catch it. Does Wikidata info box uh, on Wikimedia Commons use uh, Wikidata ID module? Wikidata ID, yeah. Sorry, I heard it was Wikidata ID. I was confused. So. Um, yeah, so Wikidata IB is a module that uh, Rexess and others put together for um, creating info boxes, um, particularly on English Wikipedia. Um, it's because if you are starting from scratch with Wik Wikidata integration, it can be very complex that you basically get statements coming in unformatted. You need to modify them to display them correctly. It's been very useful for that. Um, originally, the info box was all written in um, parser functions in wiki um, text, basically, with lots and lots of brackets and lots of calls to Wikidata IB. It was a mess. It worked. It did its purpose. But if you looked at complex categories, it would take 10 seconds to load, which is not good for usability. You don't want someone coming to the category 10 seconds later, they finally get to load. Um, it also has a problem because it's multilingual. It doesn't work caching as well. So you can't rely on Wiki Wikimedia caching to display it quickly. So um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. The years are kind of blurred. Um, there's a um, Leonard Hoffman, a Google Summer of Code student, came and rewrote all of Infobox in Lua, um, which is much nicer, much cleaner. And it's restructured everything, so it's very easy to read now. Um, but it's all in Lua. It still uses Wikidata IB, because you can call that in Lua. Um, but it does a whole load of other things beyond that as well. So it's kind of the next generation of Infoboxes for this. The other solutions which do something similar, I think there's Databox on French Wikipedia, for example, which is again also written in uh, Luba from the start, um, but it's not used so much on Commons. Which Wikipedia's. Um, I think there's basically three different, maybe four different approaches people take to Wikidata Infoboxes on all the different Wikipedia's. One is this kind of approach, one standard Infobox rules them all. Um, and that does work. So you could just copy all this code onto your Wikipedia and use it in all the articles. It would work. It would display like it does on Commons. So if you want to see what that would look like, do just go and look at Commons in your language. The community tends not to like that because they've spent the last 20 years developing articles, developing footprints and everything, and they have their own style of info boxes. So if you just say, here's a new info box that's going to do everything, They'll tell you go away. And English Wikipedia, this was deleted. Um, Portuguese Wikipedia, I think it's installed, but no one uses it. Welsh Wikipedia, I think, do use it. Um, but it's certainly available to be used. Um, other Wikipedias have taken different approaches. So the Catalan Wikipedia originally had hundreds of different info boxes, and they've narrowed it down to six, I think. Um, and those cover quite broad topics, but they have a dedicated code for each of those topics. And that works well across most of Wikipedia. It's great. Um, English Wikipedia is more complicated. Some infoboxes have Wikidata alternatives. Infobox Telescope is you have to use Wikidata. It's built in uh, to the main infobox. It has a lot of overrides because people want to format things in particular ways and things. So it gets complicated. Um, but central to the infobox concept is a single data repository, Wikidata. So it doesn't matter what code necessarily you are using to get that information out, as long as you're using Wikidata. So to a cynic, have Wikidata-enabled info boxes. It doesn't matter if that's thousands or different ones or one. It matters in terms of maintenance. That so someone on those Wikipedias where there's hundreds of info boxes has to maintain them all, has to convert them to Wikidata if they want to, for those Wikidata info boxes ready to go. But it's up to individual wikis. And there's also been a lot of resistance to using information from Wikidata over the years, particularly on English Wikipedia, because of kind of the not made here kind of syndrome that you can't edit it directly on English Wikipedia. It's a separate project. They don't necessarily trust it. Like they do Commons, actually. Commons, everyone uses as a central repository. Everyone trusts that. But Wikidata is more complicated. So it's an ongoing conversation, ongoing topic for the next decade. Keep you busy for a bit. Get more outreach students working on this will be good, please. Do we have more questions? 
I'm looking to Wikidata folks here in this line. <laughs> so I'll take advantage of the mic and ask a question. Taking advantage of me, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna be me doing a bold statement and that I don't necessarily agree with, just to push it to a direction, which is, I one could argue, and I will argue, that the fact that you are building that as an info box might be a limiting uh, uh, feature of what you're doing. Like, we are, are used to info boxes, but the potential of what is being built, like especially for commons, might be slightly different than just providing basic information of specific items uh, or files within a category, but could be a completely different perspective on visualizing, querying, and, and really embracing the strength and the potentials of structuring information for files. And at this point, uh, what is being done is reproducing a little bit what we already know for basic information. And I wonder uh, how we can do, or what would be an agenda for this further step of advancing, like using this whole structure and embracing more like structural data and commons, not only as something that is providing description, but is also semantically allowing you for connecting items that you wouldn't necessarily fit together because now when I look at the commons info boxes, they have all these links, but they are already related to something that I would basically connect with through the category tree or for some other venue. But there is a different potential here, which is the power of the semantic web. The other element, which is also around connectedness, is the power of querying. So at this point, though, there is querying at the bottom of the info boxes. Those are to some extent like more, I would say, uh, an ambitious querying of given the potential of what we have here in terms of uh, computational systems or in terms of even human creative creativity around asking more interesting questions. And this is not necessarily now part of the structure. And I wanted to see how you're thinking about that. So just a small question then. Of course. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I think there's a huge amount of potential. I think uh, in the case of categories, there's still a lot more that could be done. And um, just keeping with the info box formats, because that really is aimed at minimal amount of information providing context around that category. You could do exactly the same as this with file pages. And to a certain extent, some people have. There's user Jarrett and others are coding info box templates for files, which pulls from structured data on commons. A really nice example of this is art photo as a template on commons. So you can use that in place of information when you've got the category for your, uh, you got um, Wikidata item related to your file. So if you're taking a picture of an artwork, you give it the Wikidata ID for that artwork, it will pull in the artist, the year, everything like that, and display that in that file page, which is really, really powerful. That could be expanded a lot more um, because you can, if you have more depict statements in Wikidata, in such a data on commons, it becomes more and more powerful. You can also start querying that. You can look for files in different ways. Um, I think that's I mean, two of the basic units of uh, commons. You've got categories, you've got file pages. Another one I mentioned before is galleries that don't really work manually curated, I think, and don't really work well as navigational structures. What you can do is use Listip to make Wikidata lists. So you can create a gallery, which is a list of all um, telescopes or subspecies of a particular plant. And you can show those with images and everything, which is where you can't do one's categories. Then there's more complex you could do with querying, as you're saying, that is really, really powerful tool. And there's a lot that can be done with it. Something I was mentioning at Glamour Key is I'd like to see a standard kind of page that describes the user's contributions, which might um, do a query and get all their images that they've uploaded to comments, put them on a map. Be great. 
start doing statistics, see how many times their images are viewed, which is in a database, not in such a state on commons, but there's opportunities for links there. I think they are different things that can be built on top of commons in different ways. There are existing tools that take Wikidata items and display more information around them. Um, so for Wikidata, Scholia is a good example for scientific um, articles. And that you can pull in, oh, this is a list of authors for this article. You can show pictures of them. You can add links to their other papers. You get this discoverability there. That's not on Wikipedia. That's another layer on top. So I think it's kind of interesting to play around with prototypes of these things and try to figure out ways of exploiting the contents to share it to discover more links. It's also more complicated because there's a huge maintenance problem within Wikimedia. So take Magnus Manx tools, for example, uh, Quick Statements, uh, Depictor, WikiShootMe. They're all fantastic tools, but once you hit a bug, like I have with Wikidata Game, that I can't get something to work. You ask him, he has no time. He's really, really busy with his day job. He comes up with new tools. He doesn't necessarily maintain them. How do we get those tools maintained? Can the foundation do it? No, because there's not enough staff at the foundation to do that. We'd have to massively expand it. You have to get more capacity there. And also, they have many other things to work on, like media wiki core and things. So what's the balance you get there? What do you balance with prototyping and coming up with new cool ideas versus deploying them in human life? I think Wikidata Infobox is a nice way, of, a nice example of this that is built inherently into the Wikimedia projects. It's not an external tool. Everything runs in MediaWiki with Lua, with Wikidata queries. And it's all, the code is all there as well. So if anyone wants to, they can go and look at the code, modify the Infobox, and use it for other things. That's often not the case for other tools, or maybe it's in a different language which the Wikimedia community is not used to, um, or other aspects like that, or even. There's a problem on Wikidata with uh, constraint queries that, or constraint violation pages that are all maintained by a user with his bot code, which is closed source. So if something goes wrong with that, we lose all that. So it really needs to be open source. It needs to be collaborative. It needs to be figuring out what goes into the core of MediaWiki, what is a core service, versus what is user maintained with the community backing it. So it's not just one person doing it, versus a prototype, which is something you put together in a weekend, you demonstrate, and you don't necessarily maintain it after that, but avoiding the case where the community ends up relying on those prototypes for core activities, which is a common case. So yeah, there's a whole other topic there, which I've kind of meandered into. <laughs> we can talk more about it later. Uh, it's also something that's kind of on the mind of the Community Foundation. But... Did that kind of answer your question a bit? Hi. Um, thanks for your presence. Once again, congrats for the presentation. And my question is, you told us about the PyBot uh, book imports done from the mostly uh, from the Wikipedia projects. So why not try to use the authority control IDs? In most cases, you may find the structured data also and then you can insert information inside the Wikidata with reli reliable source. So why not? Indeed, why not? Um, do you want to sit down this afternoon and write some bot code to do that? It's, it's certainly something that people do. I've seen, and particularly Wikisite is a good example here. They've gone through all the journal data and all the information about papers into Wikidata in an automated way. And that can be done with different authority controls as well if they have structured data. Um, so yeah, it's certainly possible and it would be incredibly valuable. In particular, having references for things is really valuable on Wikidata, but isn't well deployed so far or well utilized across all the projects. English Wikipedia does not use information on Wikidata that's not referenced, for example. And it really increases the reliability if it does have a reference. So yes, it's a great idea. Let's code it. more questions people online do you have questions i'm waiting here i see there are many people online watching but no question has emerged online here in the room if online people come up with a question later my talk page is always open use the talk might peel on various wikis thanks 
So for people watching us on different time zones, it's almost lunchtime here in Sao Paulo. So I guess there is this moment in which people are sort of assessing whether or not they should ask a question or just go for lunch. So I think it's time for uh, ending. So Mike, thank you so much for agreeing to be here for uh, sharing with us not only uh, what you've done, but also the questions that as a community, as I would say even within the academic setting, we need to address in order to guarantee that the infrastructure that we are all interested in and that is eventually leading to better scientific dissemination, the strengthening of scientific culture is possible through computational situation, most importantly through community-driven uh, processes. So thank you so much, Mike for being here and thank you for everyone for watching and now it's time for the yellow empadas which are the the symbol of the wikidata labs and and as a reminder while you're eating lunch think of these topics and think of other ideas that we can work on this afternoon don't just think of food think of work <laughs> there is no free food thanks